there's like no way this happens, right? Like absolutely no way whatsoever that this could ever go on. But let's just pretend and say that it did go on. What would be the reasons why Jimbo Fisher would want to leave College Station and Texas A&M? And who honestly should be in the running for the LSU head coaching job? You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, howdy, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Aggies presented by the Locked On Podcast Network. Cole Thompson back here in the driver's seat talking all things Texas A&M. And let's just talk about what could happen and why Jimbo Fisher would even consider the fact of possibly taking the LSU job. And more importantly, I want to spend a day and talk about maybe who is going to be a name to watch for at the LSU job. Because at the end of the day, you still have to face LSU. So that is Texas A&M content. Thank you so much for making us your very first listen every single day. You can check us out on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube.com, and of course, the Locked On Podcast Network channel. As always, make sure you're following me on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson. Name right down there below for those of you watching on Tegna or on YouTube. I am the host of the show, and I love public feedback. So anything you can do to send me a follow, give me a like, give me an answer, you know, go ahead and message me on social media, and I will add it into the playlist. Secondly, make sure you follow us at Locked on Aggies. Locked on Aggies is your number one source for all things 12th Man related content found here on LOP. You can subscribe on iTunes, listen on Spotify, subscribe on YouTube. Yep, that's right. YouTube link right down there. Subscribe button right over there or follow us at LockedOnPodcast.com. So let's just go ahead and talk about it. Uh, Jimbo Fisher, I do believe him. I 100% believe him. When, I, when he says, I am not leaving for Texas A&M, I believe that he is not leaving Texas A&M. But in the past, no coach is ever going to come out and officially say, mm, I'm thinking about leaving for a job. They're not. Now, what Jimbo Fisher did that was so much different than any other coach was he didn't just mention, no, I'm not going to go apply for the job. I'm very happy where I'm at. This is a great opportunity. Let's go have some fun. Like, he went into vivid detail. He spoke about the chancellor, uh, you know, Catherine Bates. He went and spoke about Ross Bjork. He went and spoke about uh, the school president. He went and spoke about all the positives that he has seen from Texas A&M football. He has done all that. And he talked about how they're building something very special. And Texas A&M very much is building something special. They're top 10 in recruiting once again. They're about to have another top 10 class. They have the talent. They have a lot of young talent that's already playing, which means by the time that they're juniors or seniors, they're going to be so well-versed in SEC play, it's going to be second nature. Like, a guy like Antonio Johnson next year is going to be viewed as a first-round pick in 2023 because of how much playing time he's getting in 2021. A guy like Tyreek Chappelle and Deuce Harmon are going to be superstars of the cornerback position because of what the reps they're seeing right now. Same with Shamar Turner, same with Edron Cooper, same with uh, Moose Muhammad, same with Damon Demas, same with all these guys because they're getting experience now. And the offensive line, Ruben Fathery, Bryce Foster, Lane Robinson, Aki Aganobi, all these guys, because of the experience that they're getting now, they're going to be successful down the line. So with Jimbo Fisher at LSU, it's a brand new system. And again, it's very similar to what you saw when he was here at Texas A&M in 2018. You have to win the game, number one, but you're winning the games with not your players. You're winning with the coach before players. So half the guys that were on that staff when they beat LSU in the seven overtime victory, in fact, I would say about 80% of those guys were Kevin Sumlin players. They were designed to work in Kevin Sumlin's system. They were designed to work in that offense. And nobody knew if they were going to be able to work in another style of offense. It's the same thing if you go to Baton Rouge now. Those are going to be Ed Orgeron players. Those are going to be players that work for his offensive coordinator. Those are going to be players that work for his defensive coordinator. It's not that they work for Mike Elko. Because Mike Elko, I 100% will say this right now. I don't think he comes back next year. But the reason he doesn't come back next year is not because of a guy offers him another job as a defensive coordinator, a um, you know the NFL calls and wants him to go be a DC there. It's because he will be a head coach somewhere. I truly believe that there will be a team this offseason that gives him a call and says, hey, let's go ahead and talk about bringing you in as becoming the next head coach of our program. That's how good I think, Mel I think you look at a guy like Mike Elko and what he will bring. And he has experience coaching 
in the Midwest. He has experience coaching in the South region. He has experience coaching on the Coastal region. So he's been around the block. He 100% will land a head coaching job. Maybe at a smaller program, but he will have an opportunity to land a head coaching job this offseason. So it's not like the players that would be going to Baton Rouge if Jim Official were to lead there, they're getting Mike Elko with them. Mike Elko is not going to be involved in the situation. So you look at how he's recruited, and you look at the way that the style is built, and you look at the way that the players that are in the building right now are so successful. That's why I believe that Jim Official is not taking the job. And more importantly, everyone was talking about, well, what about the contract buyout? What about the contract buyout? Well, he actually would not have a buyout. Like, like, the buyout is immensely big, but there actually would not be a buyout. They, they really wouldn't. According to usatoday.com, the buyout's just in place if they were to fire him. If he were to leave on his own accord, there's no buyout. He's not losing any money. But you got to look at the times. You got to look at the recession. You got to look at what's going on in the state of Louisiana as a whole. They're not going to be able to pay $9.2 million. They could. No, 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 get me wrong. Let me, let me rephrase this. Scott Woodward could pay $9.2 million. He could pay $9.8 million. He could pay $10.3 million. He absolutely could. But should he? Because of the way the state is right now and the way that uh, Louisiana is hemorrhaging money, is it justifiable to say we're going to hire a elective to go coach our football team for $10.3 million a year when that money from those boosters can go into fixing homes, fixing society, you know, rebuilding and restitution, uh, restituting areas after hurricane season? It, are, are, are people really going to be on board with that? Or do you make a really good up-and-coming hire for a less price and use part of that money to also fix your city? That, I think, is ultimately what happens. So a guy like Texas A&M at Jimbo Fisher, he's in a good spot because of not only does he have the program being built in his direction and in his eyes, they're getting national recognition. They just beat Alabama. They're playing at a high-end level. They are looking like a brand new team. They're feeling a lot different of what we've seen. So with that in mind, he also has $9.1 million coming next season. And it continues to grow every year after that to where he is the second highest paid head coach in college football. You don't walk away from that deal if you're not the highest paid head coach. I don't see Scott Woodward offering that. And as much as I think Scott Woodward would love to say Jimbo Fisher – Top of the list. Ross Pierk is offered the contract. And by the way, I want everyone to know this right now. This was planned well in advance. Don't think for one second Ross Pierk did not know when they were at SEC Media Days. Hey, if Edo loses to UCLA, we're done. Like, we're done. We're pulling the bandaid right there. He may be here for a while, but we're done. The second he lost to UCLA in week one, I think everybody knew that his time into Baton Rouge was kind of up. And Ross Burke went to work. He went to the boosters. He went to the boards of regions. He said, listen, we know Scott. I took over for Scott. He is going to make an offer for Jimbo. We just finished the highest that we ever have in the AP poll since 1939. We cannot allow this guy to walk. We cannot allow this guy to leave. He has got to be here for the long haul. And we have to do whatever it takes to keep him here for the long haul. When that happened, when that happened, they got the work done. They got the paperwork in. They started doing it. And then they offered him the contract deal. That's why right before they played Arkansas and when everyone made the jokes, oh, they're 0-2 since Jimbo Fisher got his extension. They knew that that LSU was going to be open. So they want to make sure that this deal got done. So with that in mind, yeah, I don't see Jimbo Fisher leaving. I do not think Jimbo Fisher is going to be going anywhere. I think that Jimbo Fisher is fine. Everything that you heard, all the rumors, all the reports, everything that has been said, yeah, I 100% stand by that. I do think that while coaches in the past have said, oh, I love it here, and then in the middle of the night they get up, pack their bags, and go to another team, that's not going to be the case. That will not be the case with Jimbo Fisher. I will bet my bottom dollar on that today. Speaking of which, if you want to bet some money, you want to know what I do? I 100% after every single show go work out. After every single show on Sports Map Radio, I'm just saying it, my national radio show, I go ahead and I work out, and I sweat. I sweat like crazy. And then I go to Texans practice and then I go to Texas A&M practice. And then I go do my other stuff for Sports Illustrated. I do all my writing and I'm still sweaty. I want to not be able to sweat so much. Now I know where to look. It's called Sweat Block. Sweat Block is the number one antiperspirant on the market. Simply all you got to do is install it, take a shower, go ahead and put it on before you go to sleep. 
wake up the next morning and you are pit free for the next 48 hours. I do it twice a week. I do not sweat. I live in the middle of Houston, Texas, the muggiest area in the state. I am not sweating when I'm outside of practice. I do not have pit stains. I'm always looking my best. I always feel my best. And that's because of I use sweat block. Go visit sweatblock.com and use the promo code locked on to receive a 20% welcome bonus with your very first purchase. That's 20% off your first purchase on the number one product right now on amazon.com. Number one product locked on is the promo code. Stop the sweat today with sweatblock. Locked on Aggies presented by the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, so here's the deal. A&M has a game against South Carolina. We're going to talk about that later on the show. I mean, we're going to talk about that later this week. I know. The LSU job opening up is a big deal. It's a very big deal. Because LSU, in my opinion, is a top five program. Now, now here's the thing. I'm going to pause and puff the brakes on this because a lot of people are going to get mad. When we see an L on that list, they're on the rise. They are on the rise. Maybe they will be better than LSU in a few years. I have no doubt about that. But right now, you have to be honest. LSU is a better program. LSU has more national titles, LSU has better facilities, LSU has a better market, and more importantly, LSU is recruiting against itself. They, they really are. You want to win your state more than you want to lose anything else. There's more kids staying in Louisiana at LSU than any other program. You're not seeing more kids go to Alabama. You're not seeing kids at, L- at um, you're not seeing more Louisiana kids at Ole Miss. You're not seeing more Louisiana kids at Texas A&M. That's the case. You're seeing a lot of Texas kids at Texas Tech. You're seeing a lot of Texas kids at Texas A&M. You're seeing a lot of Texas kids at uh, Texas. You're seeing a lot of Texas kids at TCU. It's not the same. At LSU, it's Louisiana, 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 and then they pick and choose who they want. That's the biggest deal. So when you have that, you're recruiting against yourself. But A&M is on the rise. A&M has spent $450 million of fixing Kyle Field. They have spent a ridiculous... Ridiculous amount of money making sure that the program is built in the right image. They've spent hundreds of millions of dollars fixing the facilities, building the complex up, and that is exactly what you've seen at LSU. So in 10 years from now, AM might actually be a much better job. AM may actually be one of the best jobs in America. But today, today, October, what is it, 21st? Yeah, 21st. LSU is a better job. That does not mean that Jimbo Fisher is taking a better job. It means that LSU, for now, is a little bit of a better job. Now, the question is, who fits the mold of what you're looking for at LSU? The reason I'm bringing this up on this podcast is because of A&M has to prepare for that. A&M has to. Like, I, like, I mean, I know, I know a lot of people are saying, well, well, this is not an A&M podcast. Well, it is because of the last thing you want to do is be a coach who has been established, been around the block, and is looking like a legitimate contender and superstar, the next big name in the SEC. Because we know that Kentucky is going to probably regress next year. They do it every year. Every year they're good. Every year they have like a 9-10 win season, they regress immensely and go to 6-6. and Ole Miss, I know a guy, I have a report, that if Manny Diaz is fired at Miami, the number one person they're calling is Lane Kiffin. If he's out of the SEC, Ole Miss is a, Ole Miss is a question mark. They are 100% a question mark. I know that uh, Mississippi State, you know, you can like Mike Leach all you want. It takes years for that program to be developed into his image. And in the SEC, if you don't get it going fast enough, you don't last for years in the SEC. So Leach may actually be on the hot seat next year. And how much longer do we know if Dan Mullen's going to be at Florida? How much longer is Georgia going to be as successful as they are? I get they have top tier recruiting classes. You know, we've seen that with LSU. They've kind of fallen off the wagon before. That can happen. And Alabama, as soon as Nick Saban retires, guess what? He has to live with the fact that Jimbo Fisher may be the only assistant that beat him. And then afterwards, we have no idea what to make of the Crimson Tide. We have absolutely no idea what to make of them. So the question goes to, why is this a big deal for a and because whoever comes in as the next head coach, you have to establish yourself as a dominant fo- as a dominant focus. You have to establish yourself as the dominant team. You have to prove to everybody and anybody you are the team to beat in the SEC West. You're next in line. It's not LSU and the facilities and the complex and all that other stuff that matters. It's about AM. AM has to se- separate themselves as the next team. Because as long as Nick Saban is there, Alabama will be successful. That does not mean Texas A&M will not beat Alabama. No, because they've already done that. Like, we, we already know. They have done that. They have beaten Alabama, and they're going to continue to beat Alabama, I think, in the future. But 
Alabama will still be successful. 11-1, 12-0, 10-2, that's a successful season. Maybe not to folks in Alabama, but into the rest of society, the rest of college football, that's an acceptable season, 10-2. and And I'm going to be 10-2 this year. I have no doubt about it. They're probably about a 9-3 and team. I could see them dropping one to Auburn, maybe to Ole Miss. Maybe they don't, they're 10-2. and That 100% can happen. But you need to establish yourself as the next team. Right now, it's Alabama, insert team number two here. There's three contenders. There's Ole Miss, who could be losing Lane Kiffin. If they lose Lane Kiffin, throw them out the door. AM, which has the facilities, the complex, the coach, the players that are looking like a contender. And by the way, they just beat Alabama. That gives them an edge. And number three, in my opinion, is LSU. Because LSU has the complex, LSU has the facilities, LSU has the money, and LSU, more importantly, is recruiting against itself. You need to separate yourself. By winning this year in Baton Rouge, in Death Valley, which is going to probably be a night game. We all know it is, because it always is. It always is a night game. What's probably going to be a night game, you play that game, you call it a day, you have to win. Because if the next coach knows, I'm going up against this guy. This is the guy who's number two. And honestly, is going to be number one when Saban retires. When Saban's gone, Alabama is going to kaput. Like, like it is. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody thinks. The second Nick Saban retires, Alabama is going to have at least one or two rebuilding years. That's going to happen. It always happens. That's always the case when a legend coach retires. You have about one or two rebuilding years. So A&M could easily take the lead in that. You have to show the next head coach at LSU why you are the next team to beat. That is going to be priority number one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. You have to show the next coach at LSU, you mean business. You're the next team on the rise. So that's why I also think that, that Jimbo Fisher is not going to leave because of he has a program where he can actually build it to show everyone they are the next big time team. AM has a top 10 defense. They have a top, they have a top 10 recruiting class every single year, and they're adding in players that are successfully transitioning from the high school to collegiate level without a second glance. We've seen this time and time again, and it's starting to work out in a high-end level. When I look top to bottom at Texas AM, all they have to do is get a big time win over the likes of LSU to show they mean business as the next big team in the SEC West. That's why it's important to talk about LSU on this podcast because LSU is going to be a team that's looking to, they're not looking to rebuild. They're not. They're not going to. They're going to look to immediately redevelop and redefine their status as a top program in the SEC. They can do that, but AM also can show everybody hey, we mean business. We are the team to beat. You know what I hate? Spending money on things I don't need. And one of the biggest places I do that is at auto parts stores. Whether it's, you know, me having to pay an installment fee, a service fee, a production fee, a shipping fee, any one of that. I can go ahead and do all those things myself if I know where to look. And the place I always go is rockauto.com. Rockauto.com is an online auto parts service system that has been serving customers for the past 20 years. They have everything from engine modules to tail lamps to brake pads. So whether you're trying to do something with your daily driver or refurbish your call classic, there's always a part for you out there. Go ahead and visit them at rockauto.com and type in locked on on the how'd you hear about section so they know that we sent you. It's amazing selections, reliably low prices, and all the auto parts you will ever need. Rockauto.com is the place to be. This episode of Locked on Aggies is brought to you by BetOnline.ag. College football is in the midst of its season. You have the NFL going down to the wire. And more importantly, the MLB postseason is coming to an end. The World Series is right around the corner. So go ahead and get your bets in at the one place we love and the one place we trust. That's BetOnline.ag. Get daily wagers, picks, odds, and much, much more. And all you got to do is sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit when you use the promo code Locked On. From basketball to football to baseball to postseason, NHL, boxing, UFC is back in action to even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore. Get involved in the action. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to get your bets in with your friends, with your family. Go ahead and beat up on everybody's keister at betonline.ag. Your online sportsbooks experts. Locked on Aggies, presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. All right, let's go ahead and talk about my next big thing. Who should be the LSU head coach and why AM should be ready for this head coach? There is an answer. There actually is an answer. I can tell you who I want, and I'm going to do that real fast because of here's why. I want Billy Napier in the SEC. I want Billy Napier. I think Billy Napier is the up and coming next great head coach. It doesn't matter if it's in, uh, you know, Louisiana Lafayette, if it's at, um, 
you know, if it's at Alabama, if it's at Arizona State, like it doesn't matter. I want Billy Napier in the SEC because of what I want selfishly as somebody who loves SEC football are the best, the best, the best, the best coaches. That's what I want. I do think Link Kiffin is an excellent head coach. And if he were to leave for Miami, Billy Napier would be the guy I would call immediately to go to Ole Miss. That would be my first, second, third, fourth phone call. My actual phone call would be to Mark Stoops. I would love to see Mark Stoops get his opportunity because Mark Stoops has worked his keister off building and stabilizing a program at Kentucky. When I look at Mark Stoops and how he's been able to turn a program that is known for basketball and that's it, into a football school, they're winning in recruiting. They actually are beating Louisville in recruiting now. They are finding ways to be successful. On top of that, they're consistently playing good defense. They're finding offensive weapons that work. Chris Rodriguez is one of the best running backs in the SEC. On top of that, Will Levis and the way they've used the transfer portal to its advantage. Kentucky is legit. I would love to see Billy Napier take over for Mark Stoops at Kentucky and then Mark Stoops go to LSU. That's what I would love to see. Or Mark Stoops go to Miami and Billy Napier take over at Kentucky. I do not want to see Billy Napier at LSU because I don't think he's going to work there. But that's me selfishly wanting this because of, I am a huge fan. And by the way, I'm a huge fan of college football. I know everyone's saying, well, this is an AM podcast. Well, at times like this, there's time to talk about a lot of things. And to me, talking about college football in general because of the LSU job is very important. But who do I think ultimately gets the job? There's a report out there, and I've reached out to an associate. There's a guy that I know who works very close and up in personal with LSU Boosters, and there is a name that has floated around, and there's facts behind it. And it's Mel Tucker. Mel Tucker of Michigan State. When I look at Michigan State, and I look at how they've done this season, it's the biggest turnaround in college football. They are the biggest surprise team. Everyone says Cincinnati. Everyone says Arkansas. Everyone says uh, Kentucky, what they've done. Kentucky has won multiple 10-win seasons before. Arkansas, I think, just needed some time. You saw last year how good Barry Odom's defense was. And Cincinnati has won, hasn't lost a game besides Georgia since 2019. They're not surprises. Michigan State is. Because Michigan State did not have a good recruiting class. Michigan State did not have a good season last year. And Mel Tucker is a very inexperienced coach. He has a very good record as a coordinator the head coaching experience, you don't really know that much because if he did one year at Colorado and I think he went seven and five and then he went to Michigan State and they had a down year last year, but they use something that a lot of people don't understand. It's like a cheat code. They use the transfer portal. He got 15 names from the transfer portal of proven talent. Of those 15, eight are starters, 13 are immediate contributors. One is injured but it would have been an immediate contributor and one they're viewing as a long-term prospect. They are doing really good at stabilizing the system. And by the way, they're playing good defense offensively. They're one of the best in the country when it comes to running the football. The offensive line has done a fantastic job. And on top of that, they added in a guy by the name of Kenneth Walker, a running back from the likes of Wake Forest. And he's leading the, uh, the country in rushing yards, and in yards per game. Mel Tucker can use that exact same formula in year one, in year one down in Baton Rouge, and go, hey, SEC, NFL. You come here, you'll be playing in the best conference in the college football realm, and you will be playing for an opportunity to get your stuff shown at the next level at the NFL. That's how you want to win. Because again, LSU is not trying to go ahead and say, oh, well, you know, we're going to take a year and figure things out. No, they're balls to the wall from the get-go. Mel Tucker walks in. They're expecting 10 wins. They're expecting to be a competitor right away. The best way to do so, transfer portal. Use the transfer portal to your advantage. It's easier to do it at LSU than it is at Michigan State. And he convinced 15 men to come to East Lansing and make an immediate impact. What's happened? They're undefeated, they have an opportunity at the college football playoff, and they have a very good shot of potentially going and representing the Big Ten East in the Big Ten Championship. How he finishes this season with games against Michigan, Penn State, there's somebody else I'm blanking on who it is, and Ohio State. How Mel Tucker finishes this season could decide if he goes not only to the college football playoff, but also, and a big also, to LSU. LSU is going to want to contend right away. By the way, he has ties at Alabama. He has ties at LSU. 
He has ties in Georgia. He knows how to recruit in the South. He also knows how to work the transfer portal. You get those two out of the way, you are going to be successful. Now, the big good thing is, is that unlike Jimbo Fisher, he does not have a championship. He does not have a big-time pedigree. He does not have multiple 10-win seasons. Jimbo Fisher would hold the advantage over a guy like Mel Tucker. But Mel Tucker is a guy who comes from a Nick Saban background. He is a top-tier recruiter, and he's also worked the transfer portal to his favor. Add all that together, that screams trouble for the rest of the SEC West, and that's exactly what Scott Woodward is probably looking for. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Aggies. Make sure you're following us on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson and at Locked on Aggies. We'll be back later to talk all things about South Carolina, players to watch for, players that I think could be on the rise, and more importantly, what Texas A&M has to do to make sure they go into its bye week with a 6-2 record. See you tomorrow, and remember, give me all.